we were more interested at that time in allocation than we were in conservation. And, what, and we misused the term conservation for so long, I think we kind of lost touch uh, as a, a large state agency as to what conservation was really about. Billy Frank started talking about real conservation and, and growing the resource. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, that guy's making a hell of a lot of sense. He's making a lot of sense. I should be doing that. And uh, I started to talk a little bit about it myself. But co-management uh, was something that Judge Bolt had described. He thought the tribe should be involved in the management of the resource. He thought we should be involved in the management of the resource. As Alan described, when he took over the management of the resource, do you think he really wanted to do that? Of course he didn't. He did it because we wouldn't do it, and we wouldn't implement his rules. Now, we had state courts telling us we couldn't do it. We had federal courts telling us we had to do it. And uh, my predecessors at, at, at fish, fisheries, they could go to jail in state, in, in, in state court if they implemented the federal law, and they could go to, to jail in, feder in the federal court or in the federal jails if they implemented the, the uh, state law. So they, they were in a very difficult si situation until the Supreme Court made its decision in 79. After that, we played around with it, but, but we should not have been. Now I'm here to, to tell you that in 1983, I had come to a political conclusion myself and I had persuaded Governor John Spellman at the time that we needed to end the fish, fish war. Now, co-management was a hell of a lot harder for the tribes to embrace than it was for me. And it was not easy for me to embrace, embrace it. We had to tell people that we were going to talk to the tribes first. The tribes had to tell their fishermen they were going to try to work out the seasons with the state. Now that was simply not going on, had not gone on after the Bolt decision, even though that's what Judge Bolt had in mind, was we were going to work these things out. And I think most of the politicians, uh, uh, it was just too easy for them to keep, keep fighting. It was too easy for us to keep fighting. But what we did in 1984 is we managed our way through a season together. We figured out that if we worked together, we had more power. And we could actually manage the fish ourselves. And that was worth something to the tribes. It was worth something to the state. Uh, making an argument for a, before a judge day after day after day, is not managing the fish. And that's the conclusion that we arrived at uh, in 1983 and 1984. And believe it or not, and this is for the younger people in the room, it's 30 years later. We started co-management in 1984. We got a U.S.-Canada treaty at the very end of 1984 the 30th anniversary of the U.S.-Canada Treaty will be, in, be next year. The 30th anniversary of co-management is this year. We are a stronger force today than we ever were in the 1970s and the 1980s. And the reason we're strong is because we are united in our purpose, protect and continue to try to rebuild uh, the salmon, and it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher. We decided to be with you in your commitment to protecting the salmon and shellfish resources of the state of Washington. That proved to be good politics. That proved to be better politics than fighting the tribes and fighting their treaty rights.
And so I'm proud to, to say to the younger generation, your job is, is to continue uh, the cooperation that we built in the 1980s because it works and it gives you power and it gives the state power that it would have never had if it wasn't for the gentleman behind us, Judge Bolt. Thank you very much.